Hello everyone, welcome back once again. I am Nicodemus Kane. Today is March the 17th of 2022. It is a Thursday. I am restarting this video because I got so tongue-tied within the first two minutes of the last one I tried that I was like, I gotta, I gotta stop and start over again. Um, I think I was trying to say more than I was understanding what I was trying to say, so I stopped. Uh, <laughs> and I, I re-recorded it this time. I hate doing that. I know I say uh, I'm going to give you, you know, exactly what I say, warts and all, but that one broke down so hard that I had to stop because it just was not working. Anyways, today I'm going to be reading Psalm 119. This letter is Yod. It is a small letter. Um, comes in front of names. They say the pictograph is is a hand or an arm. Um, some of them say as if it is a hand in prayer or reaching out. The one way I described it, and I cannot find that. Um, it was one of those one of those guys that's kind of you know taken apart the the Torah and and um, found different meanings and different letters and and different meanings and words. I cannot remember his name. I, I always remember that he he had a problem with moisture in his mouth, and I can't stand listening to him in headphones. I know that sounds bad. But it's the truth. I just can't stand listening to him because he's got like that kind of stuff. And it's like, uh, anyways, um, which I probably do on this too. I, I, I know as soon as I took the noise gate off of my, uh, as soon as I took the noise gate off of the, the microphone, I probably have the same thing going. That's why I keep them on there. Cause you got to take, take all those little, you know, the little breaths, and little clicks inside of your teeth. You know, anyways. Um, but he was saying, when, when you talk about, when you talk about the, the, the sacred name, you talk about the yod hey vav hey, you know, Yahuwah. When you talk about Jehovah. Um, when you talk about those words, it's, I cannot remember exactly what he said. But we have gone over it, and I spent a little time trying to find it, and I could not find it anywhere. Um, or I could not find a decent solution to it. Uh, but since Yod looks like a hand reaching out, and Vav was... I, just, I closed them all down. I don't even know why I closed them all down. Because I'm a fool. I guess because I'm a fool. <laughs> Vav is the man, if I remember right. Yeah, so Vav is of a man. And then Hey was... Where'd you go? To look, to behold. So, the way that guy did it, or the way he said it, was something along the lines of, uh, behold, behold the hand of, of the creator, behold, behold the, the true God, behold he who created, something similar to that, and I was trying to find... exactly how that worked and i'm sure that once you put the letters together they mean two different things because you know everything means something different whenever it comes to hebrew but yote vave on its own is the hand hold on a second here Mm -hmm. 
would behold like behold the hand behold man but it's a it's a divine so it's behold i would say probably behold the creator of man behold the divine creator of of man something along those lines like again the guy that did it i cannot remember his name uh he was an older guy um had glasses on looked like ross perot kind of talked like him what was his name but he said it completely different but i can't find that and i can't find how he came to that so I can't really go through that. But I do know that that Yod is uh the pictograph, like I said, is shaped like a hand. This says that it is similar to an arm or a hand in the way that it's positioned, that it could be that, you know, it is it is uh pointing or raising up to uh, raising up to the heavens in prayer. So we're gonna go with that for now until I can find something better. And I, I probably could too. If I probably really dug into some other websites, I could probably find something better. I'm just going by what this this one, you know, the Hebrews for Christians, because I thought that it was giving me, you know, straightforward advice. I'm I'm sure that there's a million other different ways of looking into this stuff and i i can't really go that far into it because you know we only have so much time before i have to go to work but i wanted to at least give you guys that much but it says that it's the smallest letter uh comes in front of names several names in front of the book or in front of the Bible. You hear me? Jeez. Um, like Jacob, Israel, uh, the Jews, just run. Who the, I don't know who that is. So the four names give it to the Jewish, Jewish people. Oh, okay. I gotcha. As the first letter of God's name, Yod shows that he is spirit, he is one, and that from him derive all other things by the power of his word. Well, there you go. That's all we really needed to have. Yeah. All right, but inside of the King James, um, this says, <laughs> it looks like Jod, J-O-D, but of course, you know, that's a Y, um, the J, the letter J, supposedly the letter J wasn't invented until like the 1600s. Um, I don't know why we needed a, we needed an extra letter, but they decided, Hey, you know, 26 sounds good to us. You know, double sixes, you might as well, <laughs> it's, but, but they decided to go ahead and make the letter J. That's where you get a, uh, that's where a lot of people start getting confused about Yeshua and Jesus because that letter J just wasn't there whenever these were written whenever the whenever the scriptures were written the Bible itself and I I know that it's probably different for the um, Septuagint because I know the Septuagint was written before before the King James so they probably still have the Y in there but of course, you know, there's been a lot of debate and controversy and people have been saying, you know, we have to take the J back out of the Bible so that we can go back to the Y and my view on it is we can read it. I am not really a sacred namer, even though that I have started using the sacred name Yehua. And yeah. just because I want to have that connection back, not just, you know, not just a oh, whole God, you know, so which God, which God are you going to believe in? I believe in the father, which father, you know, 
there's been so many lies and so much nonsense that's gone on in the world that I want to make sure I get it right. So that's just for me. For other people, it may not be so much. I know that a lot of people get a little weird saying the name Jesus Christ. And I can understand because there still seems to be a fair amount of... I don't want to say evidence so much as just a fair amount of shenanigans when it comes to Jesus and the, you know, the depictions, the creation of the name of who he was. And, um, so I try to stay away from that, you know, just because, It just seems, it just, there's something to it that just seems a little weird. I still use the name whenever I pray because there is power apparently in the name of of Jesus Christ. Um, I've heard enough stories and I've understood enough to know that when someone is in trouble, someone needs help, and they call in the name of Jesus, that they get that. So there's still power in that name. So there's something going on there that I don't understand yet. At the same time, you can be wary about it because a lot of things in this world are... A lot of the things in this world are just blatant out-and-out lies that we've been told that we just tend to believe. So until I can find out the absolute truth, I just go with Yeshua... Or Yahua, or not, not Yeshua, or uh, not Yahua, um, Yahusha, you yeah. know, either one. I know I've said before that some people have some people have said that when you say Yeshua, it means something completely different than Yahusha. But it's hard to find that out too, you know, because again, you can get like three different people saying three different things. So it's you have to really do your your due diligence on this and, and really you know find out what's going on and uh understand that just because one thing is one thing is said to be one way doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. So I'm just going to say as far as the yod is concerned with the j we're just going to read this as is um because that's all we really have for now until we can find out the absolute truth. Um, it is it is even said in the, in the Revelations that you know the the books the end time books. I think uh, even um, was it Daniel or said those books won't won't be opened up until the end. The books that we need to be able to complete the puzzle they won't be opened up until the very end. So. You know, we're just going to have to wait until those books come around so we know the truth. So anyways, let's read this before I start digging myself too far into a hole of things that I do not understand. Because at least I know when to... <laughs> at least I know when to stop. Um, so we will go through this and then we'll talk about it whenever we get done, get done with it. I need to check my, uh, make sure we're still recording. We're still good. All right. All right. Yod. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to thy word unto thy servant. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt... Okay, give me a second on this one. 
perversely. There we go. It looks weird because they, they separated the word. Okay, we're going to read this one again. Uh, this is going to be like line 78, verse 78. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But I will meditate in thy precepts. Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. That was a weird one. Perversely. It is just the way that they have it, and they've separated it. You know how the Bible gets sometimes. It'll separate a word out, and you know, because there's so much... There's <laughs> so many letters going on that when it cuts it off, it, it just makes it look weird. All right. So the very first thing that happens, and I said that the, uh, the pictograph for the letter Yod is a hand or an arm, you know, that could be in prayer. Uh, the very first thing that this one hits you with, thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Thy hands. Um, it, it's also, uh, you know, they say that it was also about receiving, about, you know, giving something, about the, um, I said something about the poor, the poor and the needy reaching out, asking for, you know, whatever, and receiving of it. So it is, it is a, an, an asking, and then it is a, a receiving of the food, the sustenance, the, the nourishment, the, uh, the word, you know, receiving that. You're, you're holding your hand out, and you're receiving it. You're holding your hands up in prayer. And receiving it from God. Because you're you're asking the Yod. So thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. I am asking you to give it to me. I am asking you to give me that understanding so that I may learn it. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me. Those that have already been there, once they see me, they will be glad and they will rejoice. And I know that it's said that in other places as well. Um, something along the lines of, you know, when somebody turns back to God, you know, all the saints rejoice. I know somewhere it says that uh, every time somebody does good, um, I don't remember if it says even if it's the smallest things, but every time somebody does good and turns away from their sin, all the angels in the heavens rejoice. I don't remember exactly where it said that, but I remember that being a thing. But it's the same concept is, is, you know, those that believe when they see someone come, they, they will be happy. And I've, I know I've seen that several times in my life. Um, even though I was not a part of that, I, I've seen that, you know, as soon as somebody turned, it's, it's like they all just, it, they all just rejoiced. And you start thinking, man, that's a pretty close knit community. It's a pretty close club. You know, these these guys are every time, you know, somebody just starts believing. It's just like well, it's the it's the prodigal son thing though, isn't it? It's the you know, as soon as the prodigal son came back, the father held, you know, great feast. My son has come back. That's what it is. It's like we're all lost. And as soon as you come back to it, it's what you do. You rejoice. You're happy. It's there. It's like, thankfully, you know, thankfully we found him again. Thankfully we're able to bring him back into the fold. And that's pretty much what it is. Even though I know from a standpoint of, 
the other side, which I was there, remember, from a standpoint of those other the other people on the other side of this coin, they see that, and of course they think, you know, oh, there goes another one that's been manipulated into believing this nonsense, or, you know, we've just lost another one. So they get disappointed when they see it, whereas we rejoice. Um, I was going to say something else there, too, but I forgot what it was. Uh, they that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou, ha thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. Your judgments are right, and in faithfulness you have afflicted me, so that I may find the truth, so that I may find you in my, in my need, in my affliction, possibly. Let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comforts, according to thy word, unto thy servants. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delights. Again, it's, it's asking, let it come to me so that I can, I can be better in this world and I can serve you better. I can give you whatever it is that you need to help me get through this world so that I can join you in the next world. Because again, it, it's, it's a test. It, it's almost like it said right there. It's, that thou in faithfulness has, has afflicted me. It's you're afflicting me on purpose for some reason. So that I can become better. I can I can perhaps not give in to the lies. Or maybe it's, um, there's a way I want to say it, but I can't really put the words together because it's not the first time I've heard that before is, is, and especially whenever it comes to my life, I say this as well is that, you know, I went through all the ups and downs that I had in my life looking back on it because he was trying to make me better. He let me be that he let me be that, you know, raunchy crazy, uncontrollable child that I was, um, rebellious so that I could have a taste for it so that I can understand how unfulfilling that was in the end, because by the end of that, by the end of that part of my life and in, in existence in my life, I didn't really have anything to show for it. You know, I, I had, I had nothing. I had almost no friends. I was becoming a drunken mess. <laughs> so, so many times. So many times I was waking up, uh, you know, on the couch, hunched over a, a trash can, um, because I didn't know, you know, how much I was going to throw up the next day. Um, this, how do I want to describe this?
just a mess. I, just, I mean, it was really just a mess. There was so much stuff that was going on at the time that if I if I hadn't have stepped out of it, stepped away from it, I probably we could have just descended worse and worse into just this oblivion of just you know self destruction. How about that? Does that does that make sense? Uh, I could I. I'm starting to try to think of details and I'm like, I don't give them details. You don't need details. You just need to know that, you know, on the whole, I was falling apart. But he gave me that in order to let me see that it all led to nothing because there was really nothing there because it was just the same old crap over and over again. I was making the worst kind of friends going to the worst kind of places, dating the worst kind of women. Um, doing terrible things to my body, hurting myself, destroying myself. And I had to come back to a point where I had just lost everything. And then he started building me back up. And he started showing me that this way, the way that you rejected, the way that you never tried to follow in your entire life. If you want, if you follow this, then if you come to me, I will give you things way beyond what you ever had before. And that's where I am right now. I am, I honestly feel better and I'm doing better and I have mended so many relationships and I thank God every day for the relationship I'm I was I'm able to have with my stepdaughter, my granddaughter. I I think that had I not been saved when I had been saved, I would be out on the street right now. I would not be with my wife. Um it would have all fallen apart because I just would have been descending worse and worse into, you know, the nonsense that I was descending into. But he saved me. He saved me from that. And I look back on that and I say, you know, he gave me that. It's the same way with, it's the same way, well, same way with my, uh, my relationship with my wife is that, uh, we met when we were college and that was like 26 years ago. 27 years ago, God, we're old. Um, but at the time we didn't get together. You know, we weren't really together. We just knew each other. We were pretty good friends. And, um, we had to go through that 20, well, not 20 years. It was more like 17 years. We had to go through 17 years of the worst relationships possible of, you know, having everything falling apart and all this stuff to, to shape our minds, to shape our understandings of what relationships should be in order to come back to find each other because it never would have worked when we were in college. Back in 95, she and I could have never worked because we were both too immature and we didn't understand. Um, but, you know, 17 years later in 2012, I think it was, we were ready we were more than ready and because we were such good friends and because we had stuck it out through each other with each other and we, we knew each other so much, we were able to find each other. And we said we had to go through all that nonsense to be able to get to this point. And I find that, is exactly the same way whenever it comes to whenever it comes to uh, the way that God handles us. Some people get it from the very beginning and I understand that and that's cool. That's the way it is. But some of us out here on the outside that were not raised to think that way, don't understand it, that are just now coming to it because um, because what back in well, they say they say it started in 2012. Um, I actually think it started around 2015 when God started bringing people back in droves. 
uh, people were just, you know, turning left and right. There's a lot of people that I actually knew that just started disappearing, um, from my circle of friends. And I, you know, we were finding out that it was because they had found God and they had just walked away from the existence that they were in, just like I did. You know, I, I dumped so many friends just because, I could see just where things were going and sure enough, man, a lot of those friends now, I, I may have said it before. I know I said it on, uh, I've said it on some of my social media things, but I'll say it here. Those, those friends, uh, since I walked away from them, however many years ago now, eight years ago, seven years ago, when I walked away from them now, they have just turned, uh, you can see it. When you look back on it, you can see just the overwhelming evils that were surrounding me and surrounding the people that I was hanging out with. You can see it. Some of them have just straight become satanic. They just admit it now, you know. Like, seriously, straight satanic. There's, I've, I know too many witches. I, I know too many guys that have just surrendered themselves over to just pure evil. And it's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy and ridiculous. But you don't really see that until you step away from it and, you know, come back to it with clear eyes. And you're just like, man, I was right in the middle of that. What the heck? But that's, you have to go through that. You have to go through that in order for God to show you just how wrong you were. It is through his, it is through his faithfulness. It is through his judgments. It is through his, it is through his footprints that we walk that we get to see these things when we turn so that we can we can come back to reality come back to this world with a far better understanding and grace than we ever had before does that make sense am i just still talking out of my ass Uh, maybe i don't know you know i'm not the perfect person to say this stuff but i i know that i have definitely been vocal enough to be able to say hey you know i was pretty low and then I got raised up and I look back on it and I understand now that I had to see what it was like in order for me to be able to make this transition into something better I had to go through all that nonsense to be able to to come back to this and I am far better for it I am so far better for it I'm not perfect, but I'm definitely far better for it. All right. Did I read all the way through it? Let that tender mercy come to me that I may live. Did I read all the way through it? The second time? Let the proud be ashamed. Oh, wait. Maybe I didn't read through it. Let I pray thee... Thy merciful kindness is kindness be for my comforts, according to thy word unto thy servant. I know I probably read that. Let thy tender mercies come unto me. I need some water, that I may live. For thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed. <laughs> Let the proud be ashamed, for they have dealt perversely with me, without a cause but I will meditate in thy precepts. Yet again, there it is again. Let the proud be ashamed, because the proud have dealt perversely with me without a cause. Just simply because I exist, they have decided to deal perversely with me. They have decided to hurt me and maim me and destroy me, lie to me, cheat to me, 
the proud, the vain and vanity filled people of this world that I have been talking about constantly nonstop for 120 something videos now that it's always there. It's always been there. I don't know how many, I, I, I'll, I'll keep talking about it. The Bible calls it out constantly. It is officially calling these people proud. The Bible is officially calling these people proud. It, it went from, you know, the people that hurt me, made me, destroy me. They're just saying it's the proud, the vain, the vanity filled people that all they do, all they worship, all they have is there just to make them feel better, look better, um, think that they are better. Those people. Pride goeth before the fall, and a haughty mind leadeth to destruction. <sighs> and they want you to celebrate, be prideful of everything. These people want you to. I just saw something today about self love. Know yourself. Know yourself and, and, and have love for yourself. If you love yourself, if you have love for yourself, then you can, you can be better than you are. <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay to be better for yourself, but to love yourself um, the way they talk about it, it's, it's vanity. And you just... <sighs> To be proud. You should be proud in the things you do. It's the little things like that. Just. That kind of stuff bugs me, man. You should be proud that you did this, you did that. I'm like, I don't, I don't gotta be proud about it. It's just something that I do, you know? I'm glad that you, you think that what I do is good. But I'm not gonna sit here and brag about it. I just did what I did. Yeah, she'd be proud. Be proud of what you do. That's like um, some things that we've been teaching our granddaughter. Um, one of the first things I, I found whenever it came to um, teaching how to be respectful, uh, or, or not really respectful so much of, of how to how to raise them to where they're not, you know, prideful of every little thing in the world is to, uh, when you tell them that they did a good job, you know, when they've got a, you know, got an A in their math test or they, you know, they made a, a, a drawing or something that looked good and people want to say, oh, that's such a good job. You're so smart. You're so talented. You're so this, you're so that. And... The thing I, I read was, you don't want to tell them that because that just puts it into their head that they can't do any wrong, that they are, you know, they're so good and they're so talented and they're so, they're so, uh, they're so naturally gifted that vainly they will think that they can do no wrong anywhere and it will wind up hurting them more than it will ever help them. So what you do is you say, you worked hard on that. That was good. You, you put the time and effort in. You, you definitely, you worked to get this. You worked to get this and it should feel good that you worked to get this. Now, what else can you do to work better, to strive to be better? Instead of just, you know, giving them compliments solidify the fact that, you know, they have to keep working for it. Don't just tell them that they're, you know, don't just be vain. I don't know how many times I've heard that in my life from, from, uh, parents, especially over the past 20 something years. Oh, she's so smart. She's so intelligent. Oh, she can't do any wrong. That kind of stuff, you know, and it's created this, uh, it's created this world of, 
of kids that, especially whenever you add social media into the mix, where, where it's this echo chamber of, of vanity, it's literally all it is. It's an echo chamber of vanity. Um, if you, if you've made a system to where a, a person, I was going to say female, but it's men too, where a person can take 50 pictures of themselves and then only pick one that looks the best and use that and then brag about it to everyone, that's vanity. 100% that's vanity. And it's so over the top anymore. It just, but that's what this world does. It just wants to push vanity on you. It just wants to push this self-love, this, you know, love yourself, love everything that you do. Be proud of what you do. Let the proud be ashamed. For they, where was it at? I just lost it. Let the proud be ashamed. For they dealt perversely with me without a cause. They have dealt perversely with me without a cause. Let them be ashamed. They have gone so over the top with what they are doing. That they are willing to come and hurt me, destroy me, deal badly with me, put me out, push me down, kick me, everything in the world, simply because I am not a part of their system. That's the proud. The proud have done this to me. Let them be ashamed. There you go. That's this world, man. I'm telling you, these verses, these verses, these things were supposedly written 3000 some odd years ago. This is, this is daily. This is, this is daily. I could find something that points to this world because it's never changed. It's never changed. All right. I got a man. I got like 10 minutes. Let them deal, let them be, for they have dealt perversely, let the proud be ashamed. Yes, okay. Um, let those that fear thee turn unto me. Wait, let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let those that fear you, let those that are like me, please find me. Oh, man, I've been screaming that one from the rooftops. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. Do not let me become vain like the rest of these people. One of my biggest fears in my life, and I'm probably putting this out there, and um, is this St. Patrick's Day, really? Whatever, just another craptastic holiday that probably has some kind of pagan cult meaning to it. Um... And that, that might make a lot of people mad. Oh, no, you can't take away this St. Patrick's Day. We're all Irish. No. Just like every other holiday that they have, they have tricked you into celebrating, St. Patrick's Day probably has some kind, of, some kind of weird occultic meaning to it that, you know, when you celebrate it, you're probably celebrating other gods. Sorry. It's just the truth. Um, anyways, well, this, <laughs> I, 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 I lost what I was saying, um, because I went on my, uh, St. Patrick's Day rant because I'm logging into my, logging into my computer. And of course, first thing I see is a, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day thing in an email. Ugh. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I wish I could remember what I was talking about. Cause I'm sure it was. It was probably something, but I gotta, I gotta get moving along here. So I'm gonna close that. Um, we're gonna do this quick because again, it is six fifty-two. Uh, tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Yod, of course. 
the pictograph. Gematria is 10. 10 is the, um, the divine completion. I think it's what they said. The pictograph looks like an arm. I said it looks like an arm, of course. It's like a Y when you turn it on its side. That's why it's a Y. It's a Y. Um, looks like an arm or a hand, whereas classic Hebrew scripture is, is constructed as a single tag upward. A cots downward. Coats, cots downward, and a middle portion. It's the most frequently occurring letter in the scriptures, as well as the smallest of the letters. There you go. So, I don't want to get too far into this stuff, because in the Jewish mystical tradition, Yod represents a mere dot, a divine point of energy. Okay. And then it goes into the detail. Yod is, is it's like a connecting letter more than anything else. So there's not much really to it other than they say that it is more of a divine letter. It's a connecting letter. That's what it is. Um, I didn't see much in this that could, you know, really... Yod means arm or hand, and its form suggests a hand that is reaching toward heaven. In addition, it represents a man in prayer. So there you go. But then, of course, it's talking about the meaning of Yod is 10. Uh, talking about, you know, everything that's based on 10 in the Bible. Um, 10 generations from Adam to Noah. 10 commandments. Uh, 10 trials given to Abraham. According to the Midrash. Uh, 10 plagues on the... on Egypt. Um... The tenth part shall be holy to the Lord. So, of course, ten is, again, it's the divine, you know. It's considered a divine number. Remember whenever we used to have top tens, top twenties, top twenty-fives? For whatever reason, we, we, for whatever reason, we skipped top 30s and we weren't right to top 33s <laughs> i keep i keep going on and on about that i i think it's it's absolutely absurd that we have went from it used to be top 25 lists all the time top 25 ways that you could do this top 25 reasons why you do that top 25 yada 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 we went straight from top 25s to the top 33s <laughs> And it's everywhere, man. There's one, um, there's one website. I can't remember what what it is now. That they uh, every single thing they put out is a is a top twenty or top thirty three list. Everything, and you're just like, stop. <laughs> you you're really stretching to hit thirty three of anything at this point. But they do. That's what, you know. But yeah, no, the the meaning of all of this is, um, you know, 10 used to be like that number that you used to stop on, you know. Like I said, the, the top 10 list. We used to have top 10 lists all the time because 10 is a nice round number. I've always thought 10 was a nice round number. It's the first number where it hits multiple digits, you know, and... Um, It used to be like that number. It used to be the number ten. Hey, it's it's the it's the big number. But anymore, we don't even we don't even do tens anymore. It's got to be thirty threes. Just absolutely ridiculous. But then you know, Yod is the first letter of the divine name, and then it goes through the. It is the first letter for the four names given to the Jewish people. That's the the Yod. So there you go. Um, and I know that I am. <laughs> I get I get so so caught up in talking about other things that that we wind up losing time talking about you know what I'm talking about. But it, it is what it is. If if I get caught up in a in talking about something else, I'm gonna 
follow it. See where it leads. Why not? So anyways, that is Yod. There you go. Um, it is time for me to get off so I can go to work. Got to make that money somehow. Um, yeah, <laughs> I got, I got lost there for a second and thought, um, I shall see you all later tomorrow, hopefully, um, or keep going through this. You know, I don't know if these are doing anybody any good. I know that, you know, it's amazing. Some of these on BitChute, uh, there's a lot of people watching these on BitChute. I don't even know why. Other than to say that, you know, it's the difference between YouTube and BitChute is, is BitChute will feature every video that gets posted on their front page if you just scroll down. You know, you can see just about every video that anyone has posted anywhere. You will see the crazy stuff, too. Uh, whereas YouTube will only feature the stuff that they want you to see. And I have been running into that wall lately. Where I have kind of strayed off the path of things that I usually watch on bit or, or on YouTube and um, they are suggesting me some stuff that I'm like, I don't even watch this. What is this garbage? I'm not going to watch this stuff. But they just keep suggesting it to me, and I can't get rid of it. It's like that algorithm is, is doing its damnedest to try to, you know, try to steer me back on what they consider to be the course. And it's like, no, that's not that's not my course. It's like uh, it's like Twitter. Um. Twitter has been feeding me tweets from people that I followed a long time ago before, you know, I tried to find, start finding like the truth communities, you know, truthers giving me tweets from people that I don't even remember ever following, but you know, they keep suggesting them to me and I'm like, I don't want to follow these people anymore. I don't, you know, the video games and wrestling and all that other kind of stuff, even though, you know, I still have some of that as entertainment now. I don't care about that stuff. I want to know the truth. I don't know. I want to know the truth of the world. I'm trying to find communities and trying to find people that I can, you know, look to to give me something real something truthful but they just keep feeding it to me and feeding it to me and and twitter has updated itself so much now to the point that every th what is it? every third or fourth tweet is a is an ad Ugh, reddit's the same way reddit's so bad of course then facebook yeah you know, don't even start with facebook <laughs> Facebook has been feeding me some of the worst ads possible. Uh, just, you know, garbage dirty. And I'm like, what the heck is this? It's just, it's crazy. It's like, I need to, I need to know where I can find, like, I don't even want to get into it. That's, it's just garbage. It's just garbage nonsense. All right. But that's, that's the way of the world now, you know? It's just everything. They're trying to sell everything to you. And if they can't sell everything to you, they're still using your data to sell to other people so that they can sell it to you. And, you know, I'm starting to believe that when somebody says that your your smartphone has the ability to be able to um, not just not just hear you every time you talk, you know, I mean, there's, there's that aspect, you know, if, if you have... If you have Siri or, you know, Alexa or whatever on your phone, your phone is listening to you all the time, constantly. Oh, no, it only listens to me whenever. No, it's listening to you all the time, constantly. 
It's just like your computer. It's just like your phone. If you have a if you have a a remote for your TV that has a microphone in it, it's listening to you constantly. They've they've found a way to listen to you constantly. I don't know if they're transmitting that data or not. They probably are. But it's listening to you constantly. And they use that to sell you things. If you mention something, it'll pop up on your Facebook ads the next day or a pop up pop up in a, an email. It's happened to us too many times. We have actually gone out of our way to trick the uh, the algorithms by talking about the most random stuff nonsense, yeah, you know, the most random nonsense stuff possible. And sure enough, that stuff popped up the next day. It was the most hilarious thing ever. But now they're saying that, you know, the technology might even be out there to the point that it can read your mind. It can, it can know what you're thinking, even if you're just thinking about it. Even if you're just thinking, you know, hey, man, I really could use something that I could go and clean the gutters out with or something. You know, just some random stuff like that. Which I could, by the way, phone. I could really use something to help me clean the gutters out. But, um... You know, you can you can just think it, and it'll pop up. And it's happened. And I'm like, that's... That's crazy. That's a little out there. That's a little off the top. Uh, so, you know, I, it's a crazy world, man. I don't even know where I was going with that. It's it's fun though. Whenever you uh, whenever you need to, you know, you want to watch a movie or something. Like whenever we have a date night at the house on Saturdays, we stay home and we have a pizza and we watch a movie. And it's like on Friday, I'm I'm like, you know, Amazon. If you're gonna suggest us a good movie for tomorrow, you better do it because I've been finding a lot of clunkers. So, so it like, it like resets my, you know, we think you should, we think you might like this. And then I'm like, yeah, well, you know, at least we got that going for us. It's, it's garbage and it's all just there to, you know, manipulate you. And... It's there to manipulate you and to push you into doing things that they want you to do. And it is so hard to get the normies to understand that all of this stuff does not help. It hurts. And we need to stop using it. But some people are so far gone... There's a lot of people out there that are just like, oh, it, it, it can't be that bad. It's not going to hurt us. It helps more than anything else. Yeah, but it's sucking away every single bit of your data possible, you know, until to the point that you don't even know who you are anymore. I know who you are. You're, you're this, you're, you're this, this vanity driven this vanity driven humanoid that cares nothing about anything but what you can do in your life to get the things that you want. Let the proud be ashamed. Let the proud be ashamed. Well, that's all it is, is vanity. Okay, anyways, it's enough about that. You guys take care of yourselves. I've got to get going. Work and work and work, you know? Because part of my vanity is the fact that I have to work in order to be able to fix this house. So, you know, it is what it is. Part of my vanity is that I have to fix the house with the money that I earn so that we have a place to live Because, I don't know. It's 
one of those epiphany moments. You're just like, why Why do you live in the place you live in? Why do you own the stuff that you own? Because you don't really need it. Man, that's a deep conversation. I don't want to get into it right now. I'm sure that... I'm sure that the father will, will, uh, he will probably be smacking me upside the head with this because I'm sure I've, you know, he's going to say, well, you don't need it. All you got to do is trust in me. And then, you know, you can get through it. Even if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you'd be able to move mountains, but you're worried about where your food's coming from. That's, that's something that, that came directly from God right there. You want to know the truth? Cause I, <laughs> I would not have said that. All right. I will talk to you guys later. I love you all. God bless. Take care of yourselves. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else that I need to worry about saying. What is that? Oh, it disappeared. Oh... Uh, don't you just hate it whenever you're you're on a computer and you see like those uh, icons of the background, the things that are running in the background, and you hover over one to see what it is, and as soon as you do, it disappears, and you're like, oh, what was that? It's weird stuff. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Bye.